This is episode 78 of our Road to Unicum, and today we review the first wheeled vehicle in World of Tanks, the EBR 75 FL10. Let's watch that sweet air in slow motion. So wheeled tanks are, as you can imagine, totally different in terms of the driving style in World of Tanks, and this tank's a tier 8 premium light tank. It has two different modes, so the first is what I call warp speed mode, where you can reach up to 80 kilometers an hour, and then a slower mode that I call parallel parking mode, where the speed drops down to 60 kilometers per hour, but you can turn much more sharply. And the parallel parking mode is important because this is a wheeled vehicle. You can't pivot or turn in place. So you can see here as I switch back to warp speed mode, and you can tell because that icon in the middle showing the speed is glowing, the tank takes much larger circles in warp speed mode. And it has a tendency to fishtail too, which can make it a little bit squirrely for driving. And if you guys played wheeled vehicles in Armored Warfare, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, tracked vehicles are much more predictable in terms of their driving and their tracking. So we're going to take a look at this tank in a couple different battles. The first is this tier 8 Fisherman's Bay, where I am obviously top tier. So just keep that in mind while you're watching this footage. And then we'll hop into a tier 10 Erlenberg, so you can see what it's like to match up against higher tier tanks. Now the first thing you'll immediately note about the tank, aside from its wheels, is the fact that the view range is really short. So that green concentric circle represents my view range, and even right now in this tank it's at 392 meters, and that is with a highly trained My Best Light tank crew with uh, optics, vents, brothers in arms, situational awareness, and recon at about 67%. So the base view range of this tank is 310 meters, and so it's impossible, I don't even think it's possible to crack 400 meters unless you're using the improved Bonds equipment. And so, you know, this certainly leaves you at a deficit relative to other tanks. Right there, you can supercharge or burst, uh, boost the engine before you start to drive. And it's kind of like a, you know, what drag racers do, which is you're simultaneously holding on to the brake and then, you know, pumping the gas pedal and then release the brake and then, you know, come rocketing out of your stance. So it's a good way if you want to surprise your opponents or if you want to get a running start like I do if I'm going to make a spotting run. Part of the problem is here is I'm having to get so close to some of these enemy tanks in order to spot them. And granted, um, even if I were if I were not in a wheeled vehicle as a track vehicle, I would think twice about making that loop that I just did early in game because there are too many tanks that are visible and if I get spotted out in the open, especially if I get tracked, I'm likely to get killed or to lose a significant chunk of my hit points. Now as much as possible, like when I'm in the open ground, I try to stay in warp speed mode because you know the speed is just incredible as well as the acceleration, but anytime that I'm in close quarters, I'll like switch down to the parallel parking mode just for better handling. What's really interesting is you can see I just backed up here. The tank drives and accelerates just as fast in reverse as it does going forward. So if you want to get out of a sticky situation, you can simply drive backwards. And so, you know, if you've played the Swedish TDs, the Stritzvon um, tanks at tiers 9 and 10, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The only thing is it can get a little disorienting to remember, because if you're driving it backwards, your left and right are switched. So sometimes what I'll do is, you know, once I've gotten far enough away, I'll flip my tank back around so forward is in fact forward. <laughs> it's easy for me to keep track of. So I do think, you know, this tank, so it has, you know, fantastic speed, it has, the armament is really interesting, it's a two-shot autoloader, there you can see me, I'm boosting the engine again to get that running start. It has two shells in its clip that fire one and a half seconds apart, and this is one of the fastest aiming guns in the game, only 1.2 seconds to aim, and it also has very low dispersion values when you are uh, moving. So. Uh, it's easy to kind of hit shots on the run, so this is a good run and gun type of vehicle. I don't generally advocate that kind of play style because it tends to lead to a lot of YOLO, and I think a lot of players, like when I looked at the stats, the performance of other players who have this tank, so other community contributors and staff from Wargaming, this tank has, tends to have a very low survival rate. And that's, like I said, I think people get a little carried away with the driving. It is harder to drive a wheeled vehicle because it's less precise than a tracked vehicle and you'll, you know, you'll spin out and fishtail a lot more. And, you know, obviously the tank is newer, but I, I think with the combination of the very low, incredibly low base view range of 310, coupled with the speed, people are going to tend to do you know, things that would be somewhat inadvisable if this were really real warfare. 
All right, so part of what I've been doing here is looking to get rid of their tanks in the middle of the map. So they got rid of their Scorpion, who has a super scary gun, and it's a matter now of taking care of their LTTB. And once we do that, then we can isolate the flanks, and I can figure out which side that I want to play, and I don't have to worry about getting spotted from mid and eating flanking fire. And that is important in this particular tank. This is a really tall tank, a very high profile. The armor is paper and the wheels are large and the thing about the wheels is you, you don't get tracked in the sense like with a tracked vehicle where you are you can't move uh, but the with each wheel that you lose you lose a significant amount of speed so the very first wheel that you lose will drop your top speed down to below 40 kilometers per hour and then every wheel beyond that will continue to drop the number of the wheels so right there you can see i switched down into i think briefly into parallel parking mode to turn a little bit and then switch back to warp speed mode warp speed engage uh, you know, just when I need to get around something. And, you know, in warp speed mode, the turning of this tank is very, very awkward. And the thing, like, I hopped into battles immediately without understanding how the, you know, driving worked. I had a sense that, hey, it's not going to be able to pivot, but it, w it took some doing, some getting used to. And again, this is a nice feature. I can just turn around and drive backwards to get out of the situation. You know, with tracked vehicles, you either need to just move in reverse, which is generally much slower than driving forward, or you need to turn your tank around. And then periodically, if I've been driving in reverse, I'll actually flip my tank around so I can get myself oriented mentally again. There we go, so I'm doing it here just to get forward equaling forward. So the, the nice thing, by the way, about a two-shot autoloader that is compact, so two shells firing close together, is you can usually you know, trade vehicles two for zero or two for one. Obviously, you don't want to trade. It's generally a bad practice. It also gives you two opportunities to land that finishing shot on a low hit point tank or potentially to track. I, you know, as I've said in other videos, I think a the optimal autoloader clip size is three. It's very rare that you will get to fire four or more shells in succession without eating return fire. For some tanks, that's just how they work, but I think having a two shell autoloader feels very comfortable to me. Two or three shells is great. and. You know, obviously, you know, we're starting to peel away. We've been thick in terms of our team deployment on the western side of the map on 1-2. And so, you know, I've been playing more aggressively than I normally would, partly just to test out the mobility of this tank, and also because I'm trying to give our tanks on the 1-2 line something to do. Now, you know, as a general thing with light tanks, you don't want to over YOLO, put yourself at risk to spot for your team. you got to be patient, you know. Uh, but in this tank, because, you know, even with all the view range increases that I have, I can only get it up to 392 meters of view range. I won't be able to spot something until I get meaningfully close to them. And part of the problem is uh, you will often get counter spotted. You know, you have to assume by the time you get to tier 9 tanks and above that all light tanks, medium tanks, and stationary TDs that you face are going to have 445 meters of view range or above. Some players don't because they've got crappy crews or terrible equipment choices, but for the most part, that is the case, and there's a good example of having a two-shot auto loader. You know, you miss the first shot, so what? I can take my time in on the second shot and then aim in. A really high degree of utility, and then obviously more shots equals more opportunities to do module damage, and it's you know really helpful to keep that you know two shots to try to track your opponent. Right here, I'm being a little bit too conservative. Obviously, I have full hit points; they haven't touched me yet. Uh, I should have probably just kept pressed W, kept driving toward them. And so as soon as my Autoloader is ready to go. I can fire again. So, okay, this obviously looked super easy. I'm the top tier tank. Having that kind of crazy spilt, and especially the ability to reverse its full, full speed, is great for escapability. But, you know, where this becomes more challenging to play is against tier 9s and 10s, where the, def the vision deficit or differential becomes very noticeable. So, this is a tier 10 Erlenberg battle. I'm going to go to a place that I often go to from the side which is the E4 building and bushes next to it allows you to spot tanks that are heading west along the road. In general you should stay off the roads in this game, like the roads tend to be very exposed areas. So, But the funny thing is I don't spot anything and that's probably a combination of two things. One, no tanks in fact go down along the H lane where I would have spotted them. Uh, the second thing is, is that some tanks may have driven along the H lane but due to my poor, you know, the HJ lanes, but due to my poor view range I don't actually see anything but this is a good way to get some early damage because you know if I did fire on them I spot them I get assisted damage so our team gets a lead there and then if I fire my gun and get spotted I can simply back up behind hard cover so that is that trifecta of having good field of view soft cover with nearby or adjacent hard cover
Okay, um, a couple other things about the tank, and I, I mentioned the tall profile. The wheels are super large, which makes them very easy to target. And you'll see me take wheel damage later and how much that cripples the mobility of the tank. The other thing about the tank is that it has a very low hit point pull, uh, 950, which I think is the lowest among any of the tier eight, pre, uh, tier 8 light tanks. And so you know, you've got to be careful. And again, that combination of crazy speed, poor view range, low hit points, I think it's going to get a lot of drivers of this tank in trouble even after they get used to the funkiness of driving a wheeled vehicle. Now I pivoted over to this side of the map for a couple reasons. I didn't spot anything to the west. If they do have tanks on the west side they're likely sitting in the bushes down on the K lane which means they're going to get the first shot advantage because I'll be driving across open ground with my crappy view range and I will get out spotted even with the really excellent camo of over 40 that this tank has. So Normally I would not come up to this bush and spot from this side. Usually this is the bush you use to spot when you're on the other side, but I've already taken a look at the city to my southwest, to my right, and the only thing down there that I've spotted so far is a Patriot, so he's not going to spot me up here as long as I don't fire, right? And, you know, we've, I wanted to make sure that we worked that uh, Skoda back off the hill. We put some damage on him. I'm trying to see if there are any other tanks that might be sitting over by F0. It is a very strong spotting and sniping position. Again, that has that really good trifecta of great field of uh, view, soft, tons of soft cover, and then adjacent hard cover that that you can back down behind. Now, I do need to be careful. This M41 is pretty close, that even with the you know, really strong camo, I'm likely to get spotted. And then sometimes, like with the destructible hard cover, you know, like there's like a cart in front of me, there's a little bit of a fence. It's hard to tell sometimes if you fire or not, if it's going to go ahead and go through. I'll take the shot if I feel relatively safe. So nobody else knows that I was there. Even if I get spotted, it's okay. It's really unfortunate, actually, that I that I didn't wait for that, to hold that first shot. But I didn't know the M41 was going to go drive down into the valley and give me a couple shots. But I do end up seeing him later, and having that first shot land, if I had saved it for a better shot, would have been super helpful. Okay, and then here's like, you can see how badly this tank turns in warp speed mode. So I shift down to parallel parking mode just so I can get around the left you know, or north side of this windmill. And then I'm gonna push over to F0. Really common tactic in light tanks. You wanna to try to paint the edges of the map and by that or drive the edges of the map so that you know, you're know you not taking flanking fire and this way I can control where I'm seeing tanks. And again, with this crappy view range, I'm not spotting anything. And it turns out the Skoda ran away, but I don't wanna to be too passive. We have been in a three tank deficit for a while here. So if I play this too passively, we're gonna lose. Now, part of the problem is, you know, I did spot that Lorraine 40T, but, you know, obviously I'm close enough that he counter spotted me. Now, staying below the ridge here, and I'm gonna drop below his view, and then I'm gonna come set up an ambush. So I'm gonna come here by these bushes, and you'll notice that after I kill him here, my Sixth Sense icon pops, you know? So by driving behind the ridge for long enough, I'm pretty sure that I dropped from being rendered for him, and then, you know, I just needed two shots to kill him, which is perfect for the two-shot autoloader. And I essentially had the first shot advantage there because I'm using that bush. So the speed of this tank, the mobility, is excellent for getting to positions, for flanking opponents. Uh, that part of it, I think, in the hands of a skilled driver, that will be extremely useful. You know, Unicums and you know, the more skilled, experienced players tend to know how to use uh, speed to create flanking fire opportunities and then to help flex to defend a weakened flank. Speaking of a weakened flank, um, see where our gorilla is? He was originally sniping on the east side of the river and then he correctly flexed to the west side where there's a very long uh, you know, number of bushes and a ridge down along the A, B lanes on the west side of the map and so he's been providing crossfire which is a really smart thing for him to do and I think you know it was a significant part of our coming back. Now notice as I'm heading west here I very intentionally am driving toward this bush line and that way I can spot any of their tanks that are on the other sides of the trees while getting the benefit of the camera for these trees. Now those first two shots I took against that French Artie were just terrible. What I really should have done is driven up just a tad more on the ridge. This tank has excellent gun, to, um, gun depression of 8 degrees but if I'd done that both of those first two shots might have hit or at least one of them and I would have killed the French Artie and now I'm in a situation where I don't kill either one of these Arties and that, that pretty much sucks because they're still capable of firing back at me and then here I probably should have just tracked a little bit to the left and then fired at that M53. I have plenty of ammo left, I'm not going to run out, it would have been worth it to take him out and then I stepped my foot in the cap. I probably shouldn't have done that because that's a little 
you know, a giveaway in terms of where you are. Now, granted, those Ardies know I'm the western side of the map because I've been shooting at them. Uh, but, you know, they know that I'm coming, and there I get both stunned and wheel damage. Uh, you're going to see me take that again, immediately pop the first aid kit as well as repair kit. So there I got hit again. You can see my <laughs> back left, uh, rear left two rear wheels are damaged, right? And so the speed drops down to like 20 kilometers an hour. So it's not quite as bad as being tracked, but honestly at that kind of speed you're super easy to hit. And then as soon as my wheels are repaired, I can re-engage warp speed once again. And now I gotta be careful because I've self-flanked. I'm in between four different enemy tanks. Now granted our Sh their Skoda is heading toward Castle, but I need to, you know, just force my way back into a situation where I can take out the M41 Bulldog. He gave me that second shot. He conceded the first shot advantage. You really shouldn't have, once he took the first shot, he shouldn't have gone and poked over the ridge because I was already pre-aiming. And then I get really lucky there with the WZ. You now he hits, looks like, I think it's two of my wheels or one of my wheels. That's why the speed's so low. So I go ahead and dive down in the ditch and I'm just trying to buy time. There we go. My wheels are repaired. So I've got ludicrous speed available again. You know, obviously I'm one shotable. I can't count on that guy missing the shot a second time. So. I'm going to wait a little bit here, and there's no need for me to rush. At this point, we've totally turned the match around. We have a massive lead. You might get a chance. I go ahead and cross over behind these, this ridge, uh, which offers, you know, obscures me from being visible, as well as these trees. And ideally, I'd like to find that WZ and counterfire him, but it's going to turn out our SU does a good thing. He's pushing west of their cap and spots a WZ, but he's on the other side of the building. And then the Ag Tiger obviously have no shots. The only available tank here is the Skoda. And again, the the speed of this tank is so good for flexing and taking care of enemy opponents. It was certainly a very curious or interesting design decision for Wargaming to limit the view range. You know, I guess if you have a wheel tank, they're probably, it, the, this, it's going to be fast. That's just how it is because the wheeled vehicles are, you know, uh, carrying a lot less weight, probably much higher engine, you know, uh, horsepower to weight ratio, all that kind of stuff. So I think they had to find some way of trying to balance it. and way they seem to have decided upon that is the view range. It definitely uh, creates for some awkward gameplay and I think that players who are less familiar or less comfortable with light tanks are probably going to have a hard time to win in this tank consistently only because they're going to be over YOLOing, right? Like I make very conscious use of soft cover and hard cover all the time, but I talk about this a lot in the light tank videos. I think, you know, players who are kind of below average in terms of stats or performance are going to find this tank uh, kind of tough to play and probably have a low survival rate. I think uh, players who know how to leverage the speed will find it pretty flexible. So through 35 solo battles with 100% silver ammo, I've pulled a 60% win rate, which is pretty much par for the course for me. I have 60% win rate or higher in all of my tier eight light tanks. And then but the damage is really good, over 1500 damage per game. And then I think this tank I, it was running over one and a half vehicles destroyed per battle, that's dipped in recent battles. Um, still managed to get a decent number of enemy, um, enemy vehicles spotted, but and that's usually because I'll go and spot them early, but it does, it is challenging later in games to spot tanks, especially if they are using their vision mechanics correctly. So I don't think that this tank is overpowered. It's certainly very different. People will play and enjoy it. As such, I found it definitely a rush to drive. It's hilarious. Uh, but certainly having to make, you know, three or four point turns to get around a dead tank or a building at times can be super frustrating. Let me know what you think about this video and the new tank, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care.